My name is Nima and I'm going to be your host for today's session. Uh, it's fantastic to be here. I love, I'm really embracing this virtual life. Um, now, just a brief thing about me. I'm the creator of something called She Strategy, uh, and I'm going to be awarding each of our speakers some of the phrases that I use in this system that I've created. And if you join me at midday, you'll see how it all fits together, midday GMT. So these are the phrases I'm going to be referring to. Raise your profile, showcase your brilliance, create your version of success, and earn more. That's a really important one, right? Earn more. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So I'm going to now introduce our panelists who are wonderful. Each of them brings something very specific and unique to this platform. If you have questions for them, please ask in the chat. I'll be referring to it as we go through it or perhaps at the end, depending on what questions come to us. So Nazanin Daneshvar, the creator of Tahfifan, an Iranian discount venture along the lines of Groupon is how I would describe it. Uh, she's the face of women returnees to their home nation who are creating so many startups that are getting noticed around the world. And my phrase for her is raise your profile. Dr. Ismahan el Director General of the International Center for Biosale and Agriculture, a global expert in her field and a worldwide advocate for so much more, right? Especially women. And my phrase for you is showcase your brilliance. Uh, hopefully we'll be joined by Hussein al Mahmoudi. I'll refer to him when he comes on. Soraya Turk, a lawyer and managing partner of Legal Circle. She creates her own opportunities. And so I would say create your brand of success, right? Thank you for joining us. I'm going to go through to each of you in turn and ask you a question. Nazanin, you know, you, you did a TED talk. It was in Farsi, so I couldn't follow it, but I got the gist. And um, the title is, Women Need to Be Relentless was your title. You know, it's exhausting having to be relentless all the time. My question to you is, you went back to Iran from Germany you created this startup. What is it that you have now, what pathway have you created for the women alongside you and who come along behind you? What is that? Um, so, um, hello everybody, uh, and thanks for having me. So, uh, going back to your question, yeah, so that TED Talk was about uh, not raising the perfect girls and instead having brave girls. So, I think that is the most important thing that we need to all practice to be a brave in uh, achieving what we are dreaming about. So um, going back, uh, going back to the to the to the situation and what uh, basically I have experienced uh, through coming back to Iran from London and Berlin two times. So that was the thing that I think we are living on a daily basis. The changes, the pressure that we are getting from every single corner, from society, from family, from the culture, and uh, we need to raise our children in a way that they would be brave. And I think this is the biggest, the root cause that we are having, that women don't have the self-confidence in our culture. So basically they don't see it, how to prove and how to fight for what they want. And obviously the pressure from the family and the culture is not exactly helping. So that happens that uh, through the way, unfortunately through these years, I've seen so many women basically dropping out of the line so quickly and not pursuing what they have been dreaming about. But when they come to you, women, what did they say? So they say, thank you, Nazanin, you did what? Um, so basically, um, what I see is just like the, the, the thing that I see from our guys in the, basically in the company and in the social media, they're always like, yeah, you're a role model, we want to be like you. And obviously, going through that way, as I said, is a very challenging part to handle the family, the pressure from the society, and, and obviously going to the cultural issues of the company. So they all want to be, but at the same time, they haven't been raised, uh, basically, um, to be able to fight those things. And they are looking for the solution somewhere else, which I always say, we need to find the solution in ourselves. Uh, so be brave and scared at the same time. That's what you're saying. Exactly. Uh, Hussein, yeah. hello, Hussein. Um, great that you could you could join us. I'm just going to very quickly 
introduce you. So uh, you are the CEO of the Sharjah Research Technology and Innovation Park. The way I describe you is that you create culture, community, and the chance to earn. So you're creating a community of businesses who have a certain culture in terms of the industry, but more importantly, and this is what I'm interested in, is what culture do you want to have within your community when it comes to, say, women um, and supporting women being able to stay in their jobs within the companies that you support. But I'll come to you in just a minute because I'm coming to Ismahan next. Ismahan, you know, I was on a plane once and uh, flying for, for work and the gentleman next to me had a long chat. And, and by the way, I often, because I used to live in the Gulf and um, I would be on the first plane out, last plane in kind of thing, which happens a lot in the Gulf. And I would often be the only female at on those trips the rest would be the businessmen going and doing their thing. So that's just a point that I've looked back and reflected and realized this. There was this one gentleman who was asking me about what I do. And he said to me, um, wow, uh, you know, I don't know any woman who would be able, allowed or accepted to do what you do. OK, so obviously he comes from a very specific cultural background or more importantly, mental uh, background. And I'm asking you, Ismahan. Have you come across anything similar? Because, I mean, you are all over the place <laughs> in a good way. Absolutely, Nima, yeah. In many, in many areas, I, I could see that I'm the only woman or one of few. So there is, in many scientific international development uh, management board or organization, where I find myself, I'm in the minority. So both in terms of age and gender, part of it. So most of, uh, and particularly when it goes to board of directors, because most of people that make it to board of directors normally are in certain age and certain gender. And, and it's, it's at the beginning, it used to, I used to be a bit scared or a bit uh, uh, taken by it. But after a while, I got used to it. And I'm trying to bring in other young women to join the cohort because uh, there is a reason why we are about 50-50. So we are 50-50 there because that's the best way for nature, be it in any species, be it human or animals or plants, you need both sexes. So you need both genders. So it's not normal that we are minority at any, any strata of, of, uh, of the society. And again, what do people, women, men, people, what do people come to you and say, oh, I didn't know this, I want this to happen now as a result of what you're talking about, what you go and do, because you don't do what you do is you you are an expert in your industry, but you talk around other issues, too. Right. Yes, absolutely. So if I if I may say it, there is a few things that happened to me and it bothers me. Like mostly I was in a board of director and our chairman was about 80 and he used to be a spokesperson of the White House. So. He, for him, it was like, and he was treating me like this little young girl that doesn't know much, but she she made it here some way. And I, I had within within few meetings, he completely changed his mind. So it was really for me, it bothers me. I made sure that I spoke up even more. I'm a vocal person by default, but then I spoke up more because they have to hear the other voice and the different voice than the cohort that they play golf with and they 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 are all the time with, they said they need a bit of a fresh air, a bit of a, a new ideas. And we are becoming the best friends. And I think I helped him to change his mind, how he look at young uh, people with less experience and maybe less, less uh, uh, from a different background as well. Okay. Uh, again, just a, a point on this 50-50 issue. Uh, I've had people come to me say, I, I'm not going to offer women uh, support or training that I don't offer to the men because I believe in equality, right? Well, I believe in equality, right? But equality is about equal outcome and equal reality. So if we are 50% of the world's population, roughly more than 50% of people who graduate from universities, and then you look around and we vanish at certain points, then there's something wrong. And therefore, the women or the people who are marginalized who happen to be women 
should be offered, as far as I'm concerned, the support and uh, enabling so that they stay in the pipeline. And Hussein, the three... Add just one more equal, equal opportunities. And they think this is what the women they don't have as well, just for your equal sorry yeah not at all but you see the problem the issue there is i don't like to use the word problem the issue there is it's how we define things so when we see opportunity it is the opportunity to stay in the pipeline the opportunity to peel off if you need to but come back at the same level and so on so it isn't about saying i advertised and they didn't come that's not the opportunity we're talking about it's about retaining talent hussein retain that's my r word right what are you doing? What would you like to see? You, you are in this fantastic, privileged situation where you are creating a culture and a community of people coming together, dealing with fantastic cutting edge science issues, right? What would you like to instill in the companies or maybe look for in the companies that you grant licenses to? No pressure. Thank you, Nima, and uh, good talking to you, ladies. And I'm sorry I was late. I was in uh, the other session, and I didn't dare to wake up, walk away from that session, but I'm really glad to, to be with you here. I think uh, one thing that we would really like to enforce is the, the idea of diversity and inc inclusiveness. So we want to uh, promote and create an ecosystem which, uh, which promote diversity uh, across not only genders but nationalities. Uh, when it comes to the ecosystem, but also inclusion, so that everybody is included in, in this ecosystem. Uh, I, I'm lucky, frankly, to be uh, in UAE and to be part of the UAE because diversity and inclusion has been uh, 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 as, as a key component with differentiated UAE. And 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 I think uh, most of you ladies, uh, you know, been to UAE and lived there and and. We are lucky to see to see forty percent of the ministers are are ladies. The, most of the graduates are lady ladies today, and women in every senior position in the country. So that's the starting point. But for us, of course, uh, uh, having a diverse ecosystem means a stronger ecosystem, and that's why we support uh, you know uh, uh, programs like Women in Technologies and other programs that we are working on. And, and I, I see this is to be a key component for us going forward because, because we uh, believe in collaboration, we believe in equal rights and equal partnership based on talents and merit, not based on gender. Uh, and that's not the issue. It's really the, the, the merit is the, is the, is the, is the, is the right uh, qualification. So, Hussein, let's be practical, right? I like the word practical. What yeah. is it, for example, that you would like to see more of within your own setup or the companies coming along? You know, if this is so important and key, all the research says if you have more women, all sorts of things, um, innovation, uh, creativity, and we're talking about the, not art, we're talking about creativity in terms of how to uh, process and analyze scientific data, for example. So it's a whole bunch of stuff. How are you, or what would you like to do if you had a wand, if you could click your fingers and get a wish, what would it be to create change in the places where you exist? I think we would uh, promote more uh, the, 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 the skills. I mean, now I'm talking about the, 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 the women empowerment uh, uh, theme. We will probably promote more uh, skills and see more role models and all of you ladies are 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 are, are except for uh Nazdeen, i work with you and 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 i tapped into your talent and i i mean uh nima we go we go very very you know maybe more than 15 years uh, we knew each other uh, uh, the rest uh, sorry are our key component of my ecosystem today and 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 i uh, frankly i've learned a lot from each one of, of them and we really are, are strong partners helping each other grow. And I think that's the formula that, that, that we want. And I want to say something also. I think uh, 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 different geography react to different things in a different way. But even as males, you know, when we were young or things, when we go to big boards, they look at us, no, you, are, you don't qualify to be here. Or, so the prejudice is there. But I think uh, uh, when you are talented, you... You 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 position yourself and you 
you enforce yourself on others. And I think, again, I go back, it's based on merit. Uh, and that's, I think, the bottom line. So, uh, Soraya, I'm going to come to you in one second. What I will say, though, is this. Uh, Hussein, I know you uh, to be a fantastic, true person. But what I don't know is whether people joining us and you, everybody else, is this. Women are three times more likely to live under the poverty line in their 70s. All right. So when they are 65, they are 80 times more likely to be poor. So at the point of retirement. So what's my point? My point is that it's, it's about, yes, us coming together and saying this has to change and this is not right. But I'm really interested in, OK, what are you either doing about it or what do you see can practically happen? I'm not interested in the studies and the long-term stuff. That needs to happen. But I'm actually saying there's an urgent need for a now moment, a do it now. And transition to Soraya, which is this. You know, the legal profession. Wow. Women leave in droves at certain points. It's not just the legal profession that this happens, but it's, it's a very specific uh, tendency for many, many more women, high achievers, to peel off. You know, Harvard had um, a uh, like a powwow session diving into why does this happen? And many, many other organizations have done this too. We all know the reasons. And again, it's the biases, it's the owls, it's the uh, opportunity, whatever. So, yeah, you are enabling younger women to enter the profession through some of the work that you do. What is your big message to them? And can we get away from the big picture, you know, rah-rah talk, the real practical, what is it? What's the secret that you're going to tell them to do or look out for? Um, yes, yeah, so thank you, Nima. Um, good question. So I do mentor younger women, and what I always tell them is to start focusing on honing their skills. Because at the end of the day, it is about opportunity. It is about creating opportunity, but you will only have the ability to create that if you are certain and confident about the skills and the abilities that you bring to the workplace. So everybody's going to look at you, and I always face this. I mean, I finished university, and I was probably the youngest in my you know class. I got to um, you know my first job, and I was the youngest too. I was you know one of three hundred applicants, and I got that before most other people did. And they looked at me, and I remember them saying, "You're one of the youngest qualified lawyers." to get this position and to get it. And what was the difference? I think the difference was at a very young age, I was honing my skills. It was all about, I knew that I was going to become a lawyer. So I knew that my communication skills needed to be superb. I knew that negotiation skills needed to be um, finessed. I also needed, knew that research skills were so important to the role. So when I went for interviews, I was able to say, these are the skills that I have, and this is the way that I can demonstrate the skills that I have. And therefore, as you know, Mr. Hussain was saying, nobody then can um, deny that or take that away from you. And merit speaks for itself. So, firstly, you have to have a skill base and a skill level, and then it's you have to have a passion and a drive and a commitment to succeed. And don't wait for anybody to give you an opportunity. I don't believe that at all. I never wait for anybody to give me opportunities. I create them. And I create them because I know what I'm capable of doing. And then I go out there and I create the opportunity and I tell people, give me the chance to prove myself. So this is what I tell young people too. I give everybody a chance, but not everybody makes it to where they want to go. And that's not because I didn't allow them an opportunity or create it for them, but it was what they... Um, you know, were able to do and how far they could take their opportunity or their drive or their commitment. So my thing is that it's skills, then it's create opportunity, it's prove your worth, show your merit. I mean, another way that you put it is showcase your brilliance. If you are brilliant at what you do, um, you know, as much as people want to be biased, as, as, as Mahan said, a number of conversations later and you know, they were listening to what she had to say, even though perhaps she was the youngest or perhaps she was a female. Um, I really do think that if you have what it takes and you you stand for what you, you have, that people will listen and eventually recognise um, your worth and your merit. I really do. So just to let everybody listening in know, or watching rather, uh, if you have any questions for any of the panellists or general questions, please do feel free to post them in the, in the chat option. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I love that you've brought this up because 
with all the many years of the work that I've done, it really boils down to simple but difficult things. One, it doesn't matter how clever you are, how many degrees you have or what you do, if nobody else knows about it, right? It's really simple. If nobody else knows and if they don't understand, get where you're coming from, so that the next time they think of something that you can do, they think of you, right? They go, oh, I know just the person, bing. That has to come from being present, being able to showcase your knowledge, your brilliance and so on. But, and this is my big but, that's not enough for women and for the world because it's about being able to sustain your success. This is the key thing. And this is the thing that I'm really interested to dig into right now with, with, um, with you, which is this, you know, what's that one thing that you realized, oh, oh, I can't do this the way I thought I could something has to change and this is it. So I'll give you simple examples. Most women leave full-time employment at some point in their life. It could be because they become part-time or they leave for a, for a bit or they change jobs because another job suits their circumstance better. So the point is, again, retention is a key word for me that doesn't exist in terms of metrics, unfortunately. To sustain success, means that you need to create your own environment that enables you to stay on your career path line. It doesn't mean staying full time for the whole time. It means that you don't have to hit the wall and leave and perhaps never go back to the same level or never earn again or never earn enough again, right? So full circle, Nazanin, what is it that had to change? Oh, so basically, uh, what uh, Soraya mentioned, actually, I think is the exact and the right word. You know, it is, as I said, it's about having the commitment and the vision and having and creating the confidence through that and going through the fight. You know, I think one of the main issues, as you mentioned, is the retention that we actually in Iran, we have over 50 percent of the ladies getting into engineering. But when it comes to work, there are just 20% unemployment. But on the management level, you, you literally just don't see them. They don't fight to get there. They rather change the job to get into comfort zone, to just continue doing without the pressure of the parents or the husband or the society, or make that change happen. You know, when it comes to that, to that click moment, to that aha moment, okay, now you're getting to the next phase, but it, it hurts. It has a pain. It has a price that you have to pay for it. Then they just don't want it. They just drop off, you know. They just say, okay, you know, just forget it. So I think I don't really see that commitment towards the change of themselves, change of the society, change of the companies that they want. So, so they don't literally get into that fight and that 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 vision is just not there. You see what I mean? So it's very short term. And I've always said it's mainly I know that there are all, also some issues. We've got it through the whole world. I experienced it in Europe. And the same in here, you know, it's always going to be out there, but we cannot change those things so quickly. But one thing that we could change is to change this commitment and this vision on ourselves to make the change and move, you know. And I see a lot of ladies that, you know, as you mentioned, most of the ladies that work in our company and they got pregnant, they left the work for good or at least for like four or five years. And then they went back like God knows wherever, just somewhere that would give them that little flexibility without caring just as much as they say, okay, I'm working and I have a job. So I think that one thing that is actually missing is uh, is basically the ladies and the change in themselves and see the future and what part of the future they could actually be in. So one thing I, I would like to though highlight is I think it's important for us to be accepting and I suppose the word is kind to ourselves and to people around us, meaning people reach breaking points for different reasons, all right? And so, you know, I know so many people who would have loved to have done and gone and been, but, you know, three children later and something happens and they have to make deliberate decisions to maintain their sanity. Some people can afford to bring in help. Other people have to change something about the way they live. You know, so my point is this, is I hear what you're saying. One, you are the woman who did give the talk called women must have to be relentless. So it's a fair enough thing that you're saying. But, you know, it's also fair enough to say, actually, I'm tired. I'm broken. I need something to stop. Otherwise, I will break. 
And that's really my question. That was my question to Hussein, which is, okay, what ecosystems are we creating to enable people who happen to be women, because they're the ones who are getting pregnant and giving birth in many cases, uh, to stay in the pipeline, even if it's not full time all the time? What is that thing? And to your point, Nazanin, you're right. It is about us uh, saying, what do I need to change in my life to enable myself to stay on? There's a very weird sound uh, happening. So, right. Um, so, Hussein, oh, are we moderating questions through you, Sam? I didn't realize that. Uh, there's a question from Hussein uh, Are men in your country accepting women as their leader? Uh, so the straight answer, of course, I won't dare to to to, to answer no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I think, as I said uh, uh, earlier, I think in the UAE uh, uh, we are comfortable with having women as your leader or your colleagues or your uh, mate. So, so from that perspective, I think the UAE did very well in in positioning the women and the men, you know, in in, in where they should be. Going back to, to, I think, well, your questions, um, uh, Nima, I think uh, there is a new emerging uh, strong player, uh, which is uh, probably more stronger than male and female, which is technology. Mm -hmm. Today, technology will enable female and male, and let's talk about female now, to work uh, independently uh, 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 from where she, wherever she wants, whatever she wants, in any condition she wants. And I think this is will change our landscape in a big way. Uh, so today, the internet, having the internet at, in your house, be, having access to to, to 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 internet and to technologies like artificial intelligence and blockchains and others, will empower, I think, more women globally to play a much bigger role than what they are working today. And it will cut, I think, through any gender bias and any gender limitation. And I think this is very, very powerful uh, uh, change that we will witness now and going in the future. And this is actually part of the probably post-COVID social acceleration we will have going forward. I and I hear, hear, yeah, no, absolutely, you're right. Um, but can I be again the devil's advocate, which is my jo my role in life, right? Uh, which is this yeah. thing. You're right, absolutely. And all the research says that the productivity, the profits, and many, many fantastic benefits shoot up when people embrace what's called flexible working. Flexible working is defined as a way of working that's different to what you already do, and technology is a big part of it. But there are so many companies that will not enable people to embrace it 100%. That's the big thing. So the technology has been there for a long time. COVID has proven that people can still be productive and present and all the rest of it, even if they're just doing it virtually. The big question though is, do we revert back to type? Are companies going to allow, enable people to do it? Do you see Hussein? So, you know, yes, we've had this I, I think... so, and we've talked about it for years. So what yeah, is, I mean, you know, I mean, this is, yeah, actually, I yeah. I, again, I say this is for male and female, but I think companies today, uh, uh, th this Corona accelerated this, and this is will be the new norm and the new reality. I believe this is will 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 significantly uh, uh, provide better chances to less privileged women anywhere else to really embark on her projects and do much more with her from her our side. So. That's so that's so as, as a leader and a boss man, Hussein, are you saying that if anybody says to you, I want to learn, work virtually for at some point, you're going to be embracing that, yes? Yes, of course. I mean, even the, even the, just for, even the UAE government now is re, revisiting all of its HR structure to allow this to happen. So Great. I will let ladies uh, talk as well. <laughs> Ismahan, uh, a question for you, and I know that you want to comment. The question is... Um, uh, seen as a little girl, what is your advice for introverts? This is a good point, actually. What is your advice for introverts, especially that women are also more susceptible to things like the imposter syndrome and so on? So, Ismahan, you wanted to comment, and then can you answer that question, please? Absolutely. Thank you. I, I think uh, many of the countries in the region made some strides to, to accommodate women and to give them a more inducive environment to have family and career, but we have ages to go. For me, my own example, I got my first daughter when I was in Canada, 
and I had one year off. I was a director of a division in a ministry with a number of employees. I took one year off. I had my salary for salary. I got my second year in Dubai. I'm a director general, a smaller group, as a matter of fact, than Canada. But I got only two months off. So we have a long way to go. We have to take those in consideration. We have really to look at it. I think an inducive environment for the women, it's a must. And that's where we talk about opportunities and pains. We are maybe using different words. As a woman, I should have all the tools. I should have all the education I want. And then I choose. I want to come in, come out, switch off, switch on. It's my choice. It should not be given to me as a, as a, as a, as a gift or as a, as a privilege. It's my right. So I think really in terms of policies, the governments have a long way to go. And us as a culture, as a community, we have a long way to go to really provide women in the MENA region with those, with those rights and those uh, accommodation and, and, and policies and, and systems. So for the girls, I think for me, going back to what Soraya said, I, I fully agree with you, Soraya. It's commitment, but it's also dream. You have to have a passion. You don't do a job because only you need a job. You have to go to something that talks to you, that really makes you feel good, that makes you really working without thinking. And that's where for the introvert or for any girls, you got all the rights, guys, girls. You have to dream and dream big and dream big and nothing should stop you. If you dream big, you're going to do everything to get there. And introvert or not introvert, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe that if I'm dreaming, if I am planning it, as Soraya said, it's commitment, it's understanding your abilities, it's building your skills. Take what you are best at and build around it. So that's my, my, my two cents, and I hope that addressed the question. Yeah, I mean, uh, thank you. And you're absolutely right in terms of, um, in, it's really about having the skills and the tools to know how to be when you want to say something, right? I mean, these are life skills that nobody's taught, by the way, men, women, nobody's taught them. We often get the privilege of learning them when we are in a leadership, leadership position. But my point is, everybody needs them, especially marginalized people like women, and they need them from the beginning of their journey, not when you're in a leadership position, because you want to be able to get to that position. So that's my takeaway for this is really, it's about learning the skills and the tools so that you can speak, be, choose your words and all the rest of it in a way that gets you noticed and chosen. That's a, a really important thing. Um, uh, sorry, I'm going to ask you this one because uh, you're involved in it, in, in this sort of thing. There's a question which is, uh, is there an association for empowering women in the Middle East that offers things like mentoring, advice and opportunities? Uh, I believe there are. I mean, we can, after this, um, provide you with specific names of various organisations, but there are many women who are, um, have leadership positions that have taken on these roles where they are, um, you know, offering mentoring and, and opportunities for younger women. There is, I think it's called Emirat 7, which is an Abu Dhabi-based um, organisation that really supports women as well. Um, you know, going forward, um, you know, personally, I know that Legal Circle through, but we're doing it through um, the company where we um, nurture younger female lawyers and really give them an opportunity to, you know, prove themselves, finesse their skills and develop the skills that they need within a legal firm setting. Um, and again, you know, if we take it back to the point of women in tech, tech is revolutionizing, it's digitalizing, transforming lots of industries. So now there are so many um, new and uh, new areas that women can develop skills in, which will put them in a position where it's cutting edge. And then um, again, you know, gender biases in that space is going to be difficult because it'll come down to merit and who can do the job. So I think if we go back to as well, what Hussein was saying about um, the way we are progressing, um, particularly with technology in workplaces. And if women start to get into that space and develop their skills in those areas, um, they'll have more of a chance to put themselves out there and, and to ask for what they want and what they need. Um, for example, you know, Corona has changed the way we're doing things. It's changed the working environment. It's forcing companies to look at how they might need to be leaner and slim, slimmer and meaner to, 
to progress as an entity and company. So they're giving, you know, opportunities for women now to work remotely, work flexibly and um, work part time. Another thing is, I just want to make a point, I know because we're probably coming to a close, is that for for women, and I really believe that we need to keep a perspective on, on you know, the reality, and life is a marathon and it's not a sprint. If you think it's going to be a sprint and you're constantly running to win that race, you will feel tired, you will feel exhausted, and you'll feel that you're overcome by all the obstacles and challenges. But I really believe if you see that it's a marathon, if you see that it's something you have to plan for, it's something you have to prepare for, and it's something that you've got to take in your stride and know it's for the long haul, you just keep on going and you don't stop. Taking a year off means nothing. Take two years off, same thing. So long as you've got the skill, you've got the drive, you've got the ability to dream big and you plan and prepare for it, that's how you achieve success. It's for those that plan and prepare and then and take the opportunity. So just I muddled a lot of things there, but that's I just okay. that came up that I really wanted to address. Yeah. So just on this point of taking time off, um, my personal belief is that it is we should live life with choice, but it has to be informed choice, meaning that you don't end up hitting a wall or getting to a situation where you can't cope anymore so you choose to leave that's not a choice <laughs> that's like I couldn't continue I was going to break so it is a it's not exactly the same as saying oh I'm going to make um, a relaxed measured choice right this is what I want people to know one when a person a woman takes a year off earning over the course of her lifetime that is the equivalent of three to four times her lifetime's earning. Uh, I'll say it again. For every one year a woman takes off earning, it is the equivalent of her losing out on three to four years of earning over her lifetime. Does that make sense? So if a woman doesn't earn, uh, say she earns $20,000, $20,000 times four, is taken from her lifetime's earnings for that one year off because of the incremental increases in salary, raises, benefits, and so on that she loses out on. What am I saying? I'm not saying don't take time off. No. Again, I believe in choice and informed choice. But if you are going to change something in your life, go part-time, take time off, do something different, go learn a new skill, it's about knowing what that means for the whole of your life and then mitigating risk. You don't want to be poor before you die. So what can you do about this? If you want to know more, message me privately. We can have a conversation. But my point is this. We keep on hearing, go for it, long run. Yes, absolutely. But we are not ever exposed to the real information of the consequence of seemingly simple decisions like, I'm going to take time off. That's the conversation I'm interested in, which is actually, this is what happens when you do. So mitigate against that. And this is what you can do about it. Um, another point about mentoring and women in the region. We have, um, forgive me for saying this, Hussein, maybe you've got a better way, more diplomatic way of saying this, but we have parallel communities. We've got people who get the benefits of being a national, and this is across the region, it's not to, in the UAE. And then you've got the expat community. So people who are nationals will have a lot of um, government policies that are in their favor and they are very progressive, fantastic policies, okay? But the majority of the women who live there are expat women. And that's where it becomes murky because they're the ones who don't have uh, government rulings, you know, about equality and equal pay in their favor. And it is about a company and corporate policy that kicks in. So we're talking about two separate things. What people from a nation get and very progressive, fantastic policies there. But what do the majority of the people who live in that place get? And that's where the problem lies. Uh, a question to you. La, 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 la. Sorry, I've got to find it now. Uh, anyway, I, I know what it was. So the question was this. Um, a woman is uh, somebody saying, you know, that she has observed or he, I don't know, the person has observed that a woman wants to go for a position. She holds herself back. The leader, who happens to be a man, is very encouraging. And so, therefore, the woman then perks up and goes for it. And the question really pivots on, uh, is it about having the men at the top deliberately look down the pipeline and lift up, encourage, enable, 
specific women? You know, how do we, again, the talk is there. We've been doing it for decades. How do we move the needle on this? How do we move forward? What, very briefly, Hussein, what do you reckon? I think, I think again, uh, if you work for a progressive organization or if you are a leader and running a progressive uh, organization, you should uh, uh, include diversity strategy in your uh, strategy. And this is for business purposes, it's not for uh, corporate social responsibility or anything. So if you have it embedded within your strategy, then this is a policy w from the organization, which, you know, it is part of your KPIs. So you, if you say, I want to have, I don't know, 20% or 30% or 50% of my organization, uh, of the board of, the, of, of that organization filled with female, this is part of your target. So I think more and more we see organization having this strategy as part of their, 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 their KPIs and as part of their strategy, overall strategy. So for me, it's not something that I do it just because one person like this and he will do it. That's the, it doesn't work this way. It has to be part of a, a, an organization strategy. For us at the Sharjah Research and Technology Park, we have a, a, a strong uh, a, a, a program for women empowerment. And that's why we are supporting, for example, this woman in technology. We had a big conference in, in, in February. Now we are working on developing a, a special program with, 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 with coding for, 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 for women and social uh, uh, internet for women. So this is the type of skills you need to also empower people to be able to, to, to excel and, 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 and grow. So it's it's a, it's a strategy, it's a structural yeah. work. It makes financial sense as well as it being fair, basically. And it's, it's been documented, yes. So I'm going to wrap up now because we've run out of time. We're over. And um, it's a question I'm going to put to Nazanin. And then I'm going to, you know, I want you to each just tell me that one thing. Nazanin, there's a question here. It says, um, uh, la, la, la. what would you suggest could be done to help more women in tech believe in themselves and commit to their, to their vision is the question. But that's not. I want to, to put a little twist on that because we've been talking about this, all the typical stuff. My question to you is, you know, what is it that your friends, maybe you, people you know, that thing that has to change to enable them to stay doing what they are brilliant at? Is it that they need help with children? Is it that they need the, their parents to stop saying you can't do that? Is it, you know, what's that thing, that key power move? Go on then, what is it? <laughs> yeah, so basically there are two sides. The tech, the tech question I'll answer uh, on the second point. So I think the main thing is about them, as I said, to have the courage and put this step forward. Either it is towards the husband to handle their life, like with the children, to uh, make the husband understand that this is a, basically a life that we should manage together. So talk to him and stand for it and goes to the parents that there are lots of parents that are putting the pressure so the girl doesn't take that actual responsibility. And going back to work, I see a lot of women, they never raise their hands. They just don't put that step forward to take the responsibility and be the person that gets it done and moves to the next level. So uh, basically you mentioned the question, uh, I believe myself, we shouldn't be waiting for somebody to pull us up or considers us to move forward in the com company or the position or whatsoever. This is the wrong attitude. And I think a lot of women have that issue. Uh, I can see it in my life, in my company, in uh, all sorts of community that we are working with. So I think, again, going back to that relentless and bravery, I think that is the thing. That is the first step, regardless of, I always say, there is no darker color uh, than black. So nothing is going to happen. Nothing worse is going to happen. What is going to happen if you just take this step? So I think in my, in my personal experience and how I've developed myself, I have always been like, just go through it and live with it. And that is something that we need to actually work. And that is something that I'm teaching my daughter as well, like being so small. So I think she should just hit the wall so many times and eventually she will get through it. And going back to the tech question, and the good thing actually about the tech community is like, I've been a developer from like basically 20 years ago I started. Um, there were not that many women in the team. But right now, even in our company, in the tech team, I see half are pretty much women. So the, the, the paradigm is just changing. And 
there are a lot of more women in tech that are working as a developer or these hardcore positions that basically we talk. So it is not fully male dominated, at least in Iran right now. Um, but I think um, uh, going back, I think one of the important things that normally I see it as a, as a weakness to myself and all the um, uh, ladies around myself um, is that social networking power that basically we don't take it very serious. But looking at the male colleagues, they are really good at networking, being together, talking together, solving issues together and moving to the next step. So I think that is one of the things that the ladies that want to be brilliant in tech, they need to be more involved in the events, in the communities, and in the network of the other women doing the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to come. Thank you for that, Nazarene. No I'm going to come to each of you, um, but can we have literally one sentence? What is your, what is the power move, the power move, that thing that's going to shift things that either you realized for yourself or that you observe other women around you need and do Soraya just in a sentence please um, in a sentence it's be the change you want to see if there's something you want go out and get it firstly start with develop the skill then build your confidence as you're developing the skill and then walk the mile with other people so as Nazanin was saying network with the community or the people that are in the community that you want to be in if it's in tech surround yourself by the gurus speak to them um, you know, headhunt mentors that can support you, people that have, have walked that journey before you that can help you through all the obstacles and challenges. Um, so it's really creating that space. Create your own ecosystem. Don't wait for any other external organization to create it. You can create it with all the resources you have. Just one last point I'd make is women are so resourceful. As a, as a, as a species, as a human, um, you know, female we have all the resources we need because we're nurturers, we're mothers, we're lovers, we're, we're you know, it's it's an inbuilt, innate um, skill that, that we really have and we should use that to our advantage. We network better than any man can. I mean, this is not to say, you say no offence, but, you know, we do know because human beings generally are social beings, but women also, um, you know, just given our role, um, I think we can and we have the ability and we just need to ap apply ourselves and believe in ourselves. So Hussein, thank you, Soraya. Hussein. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> one thing, you know, so you know, what do you see happening? And you think, I wish she didn't do that. I wish they did, or I wish they would, this would happen more. In other words, is it a case of you observe mm, holding back, not go, you know, what is it that you, if you had a wand, ding, what is it that you would like? to change, to be changed already? I wish a sentence. <laughs> I wish that the women empowerment topic does not get used for manipulation and for uh, the purposes of, um, what's the right word? Uh, for the wrong purposes. I think- uh, uh, Give us an example. There are there, there are some uh, uh, there, sometimes the, uh, the women empowerment or the diversity topic has been used for the wrong purposes or, or with the wrong intention uh, uh, or uh, uh, or it's, it's used to mislead factual uh, 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 info. So I don't I I've been I've launched the first business woman award in the UAE in 2000, 2001. So that's 20 years ago. So I've been involved. And one thing that I really, you know, noticed that there are a lot of, you know, uh, 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 organization or people try to just uh, 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 do lip service or use this for the purpose of maybe could be marketing or could be other things. So we, we must be aware that uh, that 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 this could be misused and it could if it's misused it will dilute the overall objective the good news is i think women in the middle east are making fantastic progress i believe uh, like men by the way you know is is this we are you know you are we are both progressing very well growing very well our skills are being developed our our hopes and aspiration being developed and it will take us some time but i think technology will will definitely definitely accelerate the role of women in the Middle East in a big way. And I'm very optimistic about the next five years. I think it's going to be a transformational 
in five years for the betterment of the Middle East societies, having women being more empowered and more uh, uh, impactful in our organization and our societies. So what you're saying is you want people to be genuine and to fix the figures, i.e. retention and so on, and opportunity and all the rest of it, as opposed to wave a flag and just talk the talk, right? Cool. Correct. Ismahan, final word to you. What is that, again, the power move that you either have done for yourself? But again, I want it to be a practical thing that somebody can go away from this and say, hey, I'm going to try that or I need that too. What is it? So it's two words, not a sentence. <clears throat> the first one, it's positive discrimination. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are in the government, you are in a corporate, wherever you are, I think men have been given centuries and centuries of privileges. I think we have to give it to women for at least 100 years to balance it out. The second one is critical mass. There are few of us out there. It's not enough. We have been talking about it for so long. We need critical mass. So wherever you are, give that positive discrimination to a woman, give her an opportunity, give her a chance, and give her the skills. Going back to the skills, we have a program called AULA, Arab Women for Leadership in Agriculture, that we started with the Islamic Development Bank and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And we have a cohort from six countries. And what we are trying, what we find out is that the soft skills, they have all the tech, they have all the knowledge because they go to university and they got the degree. And they are doing wonderful at the university but they don't have the soft skills. So for me, it's positive discrimination for at least 100 years to get ready for it and critical mass. We need the critical mass of us. And I, and we love, yeah. I love that you said the phrase soft skills because, um, and we're going to end now. Uh, my takeaway is this, you need core skills. These are core to your life and they are what people call soft skills. They're not soft. Their core, okay? And it boils down to how do I let others know what I'm brilliant at? How do I, don't tell me to put my hand up if I don't know how to choose the words, how to be when I'm saying them, what to do. This is huge. It really is. Uh, as you say, it's man, it's the, this, it doesn't matter how clever you are if you can't get this sorted. My one phrase is this. It is a do-it-yourself moment, people. Don't wait. Don't wait. It's a do-it-yourself crisis, actually, because your life happens every single day. Do something about it. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, wherever you are. And uh, if you have any questions for us specifically, I think uh, maybe you can uh, email the organizers and get in touch. I personally have a session at Midday GMT talking about she strategy. I'd love to have all of you there. And it has been a thrill. Thank you very much. Soraya, Nazneen, Hussain, Ismahan, and people tuning in. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you.